Well, welcome back everybody. Uh, we're still here trying to figure out how to open that door up on the top floor. Well, actually, um, there's no way you can actually do it by yourself. What you have to do is, um, remember how we were able to call, uh, to call Percy but not Migs? There's a reason for that. And so to figure that out, we actually have to go into our room to trigger what happens. Wait, that's not our room. I did it again. Hey, a phone call. Hello? Mr. Jordan, it's Percival Jones. I've done the research you requested. Oh yeah? That's great. What did you find out? Well, most of what I discovered was pretty much well-known information, which I'm sure you are already aware of. However, there is one particular piece of information you may be interested in. I'm listening. It seems that several years ago, some of the windows in the house were painted over to prevent people on the street from seeing inside. Oh? I thought it was just grime. It's more than just that, however. In certain rooms, the windows aren't really windows at all. That is to say, the paints are just facades. Really? So what are they really? That's the interesting part. They're just pieces of cardboard. Cardboard? That's ridiculous! How does that keep the rain out? I hardly believed it myself, but apparently only the windows that don't get much rain. I don't know if this will benefit you in any way, but I thought you ought to know. No, no, I'm, I'm sure it'll come in handy. Thanks, Professor. You're quite welcome. Goodbye, Mr. Jordan. Well, that's bizarre. Um, unfortunately... This doesn't apply to the window on the first floor, Ben tried it, but let's try this window over here. You give the window a quick shove and are slightly surprised to find it flies out of the frame and floats gently down to the street below. Awesome! Jumping out the window probably isn't a great idea, it's a long drop. Okay, let's go on the windowsill. I must be crazy for doing this. You take a deep breath and climb up the windowsill and out onto the ledge. Awesome! Can we go down? No. Okay. Nothing over there. Don't want to go up there. Can we go up the drain pipe? Hmm, this section of the pipe looks loose. That's not what I clicked on, Ben, but cool, you got a piece of pipe now. You've already broken it enough. Don't want to make it. Uh, don't make it any worse. Can't think of what to do with it. Hmm. Well, I guess that'll come in handy. It's a piece of drain pipe. Well, let's go back into the window, which looks kind of like a door now, but eh. Okay. Now maybe we could get into the top floor with this piece of broken pipe. Use brute force to get inside. And my foot has a cramp. It hurts. Ow! Ah, uh, okay. <clears throat> Alright, let's give this a try. Alright, luck. You might not give in to lockpicks or keys, but let's see how you do against a pissed-off paranormal investigator. You tell it, Ben. You gather up all your strength and prepare to hit the lock as hard as you can. To your slight surprise, the padlock breaks off and the door creaks open. Yay! Let's just walk inside and not tell the others. Uh, I guess I have to click the hand on it. Hmm. Well... Looking at the window, you shudder to think that a man jumped out of it only to be impaled on the spikes below. I'd rather not get near the window if you can avoid it. That's a good idea. It's a rope, which you deduce is connected to the bell outside. Hmm. You give the rope a, f a few quick tugs. It's a very noisy bell. Huh, he has no comment on the bell. Odd marks. Hmm. 
There are some odd markings on the wall. They look like scratch marks with a dried, dark red substance on them. Whoops. Yes, I totally want to talk to the odd marks. That's exactly what I wanted to do. Running your fingers across the marks, you realize they were made by human fingers. Well, that's creepy. Let's get out of here. And hope and pray that the door will not magically close and lock itself again. Well, we've done our duty. So hopefully we can get Alice and Otto in here unscathed and without any problems. And hopefully they finish their research. Because I don't want to wait anymore. Okay. Top floor room. Well, I did it. I managed to get uh, the door to uh, the horror room open. Really? That's great. How did you manage it? It's amazing how far a little rage in a metal pipe can get you. Then let us all go upstairs and see what we can do about this ghost. It feels strange in here. Almost like the air was charged with electricity. Yes, I feel it too. We are definitely not alone here. So, how do you how do we get the attention of the horror? That's what we are researching. Otto and I found two ancient texts, one to summon spirits and another to open a gateway to the dimension of death. The summoning must be performed by a female and the portal opening by a male. That's interesting. Those crazy agents knew their stuff, didn't they? Indeed. Whenever you're ready, Miss Wilkins. Alice prepares herself and begins chanting a verse in Latin. Tempus eterna mortis, eterna mortis quis hoc even something something I don't know Latin mortis of the. Nothing seems to be happening, but maybe it's because I'm reading Latin stupidly. Well, I'm kind of relieved actually. I was worried some floating skeleton with an apron and a machete was going <laughs> to was going to materialize and kill us all. <laughs> I see what you did there. Suddenly you hear footsteps coming up the stairs. Listen! Someone is coming! Get ready. Who knows what might come through that door? 